and welcome to this video on electron structure. This is for the OCR A specification. My name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and the whole point of this video is basically just to give you a quick overview um, of the, um, the, the bit of the topic in module 2 on electron structure. Now the uh, PowerPoints that I'm using here, the slides that I'm using here, um, you can have, um, you can get access to them, you can purchase them. Uh, if you just click on the link in the description box below and you'll be able to get them from there. Um, but like I say, um, these reactions, um, sorry, <laughs> these PowerPoints, these slides are linked to the OCRA specification and they are um, in line with the specification points that you can see on here. So they should be relevant for you if you are studying OCRA chemistry. Okay, let's have a look. Let's start with electron configuration. Okay, so electron configuration, obviously this is how electrons are arranged in an atom and they're arranged in um, shells, okay? And these shells are then split into four subshells and it's these subshells that you need to know a little bit about. So um, let's have a look. So we've got the first subshell, which is the S subshell. It has one orbital and it can hold two electrons in there. The P subshell has three orbitals. It can hold two lots of three uh, two electrons in each, so that's six electrons in total for the P subshell. Uh, the D subshell has five orbitals, and again, each orbital can hold two electrons, so that's ten electrons in total for the D. And then the F has seven orbitals. Uh, this can hold two electrons each, like I say, so that's 14 electrons in the F block. So obviously we've got these colour-coded. Um, let's just get an idea of how these fit into the shell structure, which you might be familiar with. So shell number one, the first shell, the only um, subshell that's in there is the 1s subshell, and it can only hold two electrons. In the second shell, we now have another subshell. This is the p subshell. Again, it's highlighted in red so you can see it. So we've got the 2s and 2p subshells in there. So in total, in the second shell, we can fit eight electrons in there. So two plus three, lots of two. In shell number three, now what we have really is we have the 3s, 3p and 3d now. We've got 3d subshell. So basically this can hold up to 18 electrons. So you can see here we've got two, uh, two electrons in the 2s, in the 3s, sorry. We've got six electrons in the 3p. And we've got 10 electrons in the 3d. So we add all them up and we should get 18 electrons. So you can see how this is structured here and how they how the order is. You're going to be getting used to this because we need to give an electron configuration for subshells instead of just shell numbers. Okay. So these are also known as, they've got this fancy name, we call it a principal quantum number, which is this bit here. So instead of called shell number, you might see this written here. It's all it is, it's just the shell number, that's all. And that basically matches these numbers in front. Okay. So the higher the energy, or oh, the higher the shell number, should we say it? So like this number here, like three, the further away it is from the nucleus, these have a lot higher energy. And um, that's quite important because when you're doing ionizing or ionizing an atom, uh, um, the energy level that it sits in is gonna be important, which we'll see in a minute. Okay, so let's just look at some of these subshells. I'm gonna look at the shape of the orbitals in particular. So the S one has one orbital that can hold two electrons in it. So it looks like a sphere, a bit like that. And um, the little red lines are just guidelines for 3D, three dimensional shape. The S orbital is spherical, like I say. Um, two electrons can move anywhere within that sphere. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. The P orbital um, has three orbitals, like we like was, uh, discussed before. We've got two uh, two electrons can fit in each orbital, so you can fit six electrons in total in the P. So let's have a look at them. So we they give them these really cool names. They call it a PX orbital. Uh, it's just labeling it, for, um, for example. So we've got one that's basically uh, horizontal, one that's vertical. We'll call that one a PY orbital. And guess what the other one's called? PZ. Okay, so the PZ is the one that's diagonal. Uh, these orbitals are all at 90 degrees. So when we say it's diagonal, it's actually kind of 3D. It's like sticking out of the page. It's difficult to see on here. So they're all 90 degrees to each other. And if we cluster them all together, which is what happens in reality, you get this shape here. So we get the PX, PY, and PZ orbital. They make up the P subshell. And the electrons effectively move around. You've got an electron here, an electron here, and they whiz around within these, um, within these orbitals here. Okay, so basically the um, the S and the P make up a shell. So a shell is made up of one of them and one of them, especially if we look, go looking in the second uh, principal quantum number. Let's get them words in there. So yeah, okay, so we need to know all these shapes. 
and recognize them. Okay, 3p orbitals, dumbbell shaped, hold two electrons, can move anywhere within this shape. Okay, that's where the electron can move. Okay, um, also we've got to know about spin pairing. Okay, so when we've got two electrons and they occupy one orbital, what they do is they spin in opposite directions. As long as you know that, because they don't, they don't spin in the normal way. So one will spin clockwise and the other one will spin anticlockwise when they're in the, um, the same orbital. Okay, that's quite important. Okay, so let's look at an electron configuration. So we're going to start and use these things now. And I'm just going to show you here. We've got, I'm going to start off with, obviously, this is a bit of an electron configuration, which I'll talk through in a minute. We've got these energy levels as well. Remember each of these orbitals, you can see 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. These energy levels here are all done in a, um, in a very specific way. Basically, this is the lowest uh, energy, the most stable um, subshell, and as we go further away, it becomes the least stable. The 1s is the one that's closest to the nucleus, and as we go further up, these ones are further away from the nucleus. Just to give you an idea, we're gonna we're gonna use this in a minute anyway. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So the big number in electrical configuration tells you the shell number or the principal quantum number. Okay, so this is shell number one. The little le uh, letter here, this one's S, tells you the subshell. So it's either S, P, D, F, whatever it is. And the number here, the big number, tells you the number of electrons in that subshell. So in this case, we've got a, uh, within the first shell and an S suborbital with two electrons inside it. That's basically what that means. So let's have a look at the electrical configuration for iron. Okay, so here's iron here. Iron's got 26 uh, electrons in it and 26 protons because this is an element obviously that's the mass number so first one 1s2 two electrons sitting there then 2s2 uh, and then 2p6 and basically what all we're looking for is these numbers on the top to add up to 26 bearing in mind we've got to fix for these rules 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d6 Notice it's weird when it gets to this stage because we actually fill up the 4s first before the 3d. Seems a bit confusing, but that's how it goes. So the 4s is slightly lower in energy than the 3d. So it doesn't have to be in numerical order in terms of how you actually fill the um, electron orbitals. So um, you can see here that we've got six electrons in the 3d, uh, five singly paired, and one uh, is actually paired up here in this orbital. So check, look at the small numbers, make sure they add up to give 26, okay? So add all these up, and then you know you've got the right number. We always fill from the lowest energy level upwards, like what we showed you there before. So we started here, and then we filled up as we go along. And we fill all to singly first, uh, and then we pair them up. Um, so that's why these fill singly, then we pair that one up. Electrons are negatively charged, and so what they do is they repel each other. They don't like being near each other, to be honest, um, if they can help it. So they do sit singly first. It's a bit like going on a bus, I suppose, and uh, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I've certainly noticed that when you go on a bus, uh, people sit on their own seat. They'd rather sit on their own rather than sit next to somebody else. Uh, and some people even put their shopping bags next to the seat so nobody else sits next to them. So I suppose electrons are like people on a bus. They want to sit on their own seat first, then only if they have to, until there's no more seats left, then they will maybe reluctantly sit next to a stranger. Uh, this is a bit like electrons. <laughs> um, right, okay. Let's look at electric configuration of ions. So ions obviously lose or gain electrons, okay? So with ions, what you do is you just add or remove electrons from the highest energy level first. So we're looking over here this time, not down here. So let's look at the electrical configuration for calcium 2 plus, Ca2 plus. Now what's happened here is this has lost two electrons, but it will lose it from the 4s orbital. This is the configuration for calcium metal, but it's got two electrons in the 4s, so it's going to lose these to form calcium ion. So here it is. There's the electrical configuration. So we lose the 4s2, and obviously we've got this configuration here. We lose the two electrons from here as well, so they'll go. Check the numbers, make sure they add up. So you've got 2, 2, 6, 2, 6. Remember, calcium has 20 electrons. You take two away because we've lost them, so it should have 18. So these should add up to that. And again, there we go, losing the 4s. There you go, and it should disappear. And so this is the energy, electron energy profile for the calcium 2 plus ion. Okay, so 
We can use noble gas symbols as well as a shorthand way of writing um, electrical configurations. This is particularly useful for uh, writing electrical configurations for large atoms, ones where they've got loads and loads of electrons in. So it's just a bit uh, quicker and simpler to do it this way. So let's have a look. So potassium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s1. Okay, so this is the electrical configuration for potassium. Now, this bit... This front bit has the same electron configuration as argon. So to make it shorter, what we can do is we can just put in a square bracket, we can just put AR in a square bracket. Basically, this is telling us, right, the electron configuration of argon and 4S1. So we can either write it like this, which is the full electron configuration, or we can write a shorthand version and say square brackets argon and then 4S1. So it's pretty straightforward. But really read their question carefully they might want the full electron configuration they might accept this if they ask for the full electron configuration you must write the full thing unfortunately um it didn't take that long but it's just it's a bit of a pain writing all this out um it's just quicker to do it that way so just read the question really carefully and that's it um pretty short one that one um that was the a bit of an overview of electron structure make sure you know all that as well uh like i say you could purchase these powerpoints um from uh, the uh, link in the description box. We just click that and you can have an access to them there and you can use them for revision. Use them on your, your, your mobile phone or your tablet or whatever. Use it when you're going to college or school. Stick your headphones in and have a um, put some music in and then listen to it perhaps, I don't know. Uh, also, please subscribe to the channel. If you click on the little circle picture uh, in the middle of the screen right now um, and you can subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with all the latest videos that get put on and um, get your questions and comments in the comments box below. That's it now. Bye-bye.